Hi, welcome to the show. My name is Jesse Goldberg, and my guest today is the one and the only Keith Durbin. Keith, how is it good to have you here? Now, tell, tell me about yourself a little. You've been around the city a long time, and what, what is your, I mean, where are you from? I'm originally from Paducah, Kentucky. I uh, was born and raised there. I uh, went to school in Atlanta, Emory University. Came to uh, Nashville about 15 years ago. Uh, got involved in my neighborhood association there, which was called Belmont Hillsboro Neighbors. I'm in the Belmont Hillsboro neighborhood, which is uh, uh, near Vanderbilt and Belmont University. Uh, really involved in the uh, neighborhood association, so much so that when our local district council person was term limited, uh, I thought, hey, you know, I know how government works. I've been on the neighborhood activist side for a while. Uh, why don't I give it a shot? So I ran for Metro Council, Who'd District 18. I was unopposed. Unopposed, there you go. I was unopposed, which was great. Right. Um, and I was a district council person. Uh, after about a year and a half, the mayor approached me uh, to come work for him as the chief information officer for the Metro government. Which mayor was that? That's Mayor Dean. Mayor Dean, okay. Mayor Dean asked me to do that. It's almost four years now, and so I have been the Chief Information Officer and run the Central uh, IT Services Department for Metro uh, for almost four years. Part of that... Uh, why, is it inf why is it IS instead of Information Services? Uh, IS is, it's, it's Information Technology Services is the department. Oh, okay, so, so ITS? ITS, oh, okay. and a part of ITS is actually uh, management of Metro's uh, cable TV stuff. So I am officially the cable administrator for Metro government. So uh, did you have any kind of special qualifications for this or did you guys maybe just so you can do a good job? I, I have a 20 something years of IT background. I have a business major. Uh, my I grew You're up squeaking in squeaking over there. I am squeaking. I'll stop yeah. that. Okay. I grew up in data centers. My uh, father ran bank data processing uh, data centers uh, in the eastern half of the country. So I spent a lot of time Got my first TRS-80 in 1978. I'm supposed to know what that is, TRS-80? TRS-80 was one of the very first home use computers that was available, and so uh, every, nobody so else you're a real had So you're a tech guy then, real tech guy. Then. Well, that's, that's the job. That's why you're doing it. Okay, that's why I'm so what, now exactly who are you over? I mean, you're everybody's boss here. Right? You're like the <laughs> boss here, right? I, I, again, back to the cable administrator role, I have responsibility for the PEG studio. So, uh, that's John right here. And that we're in, right. John and some of the others that work here report up through uh, my department. Also, the Metro 3 uh, uh, government TV channel, all of the people that work for that actually report, um, report to me. And you report just to the mayor? Anybody above you? I report to the mayor. So there's a guy in between, though. Is there a guy named Michael Rear in between you guys? Michael Rear uh, works for me. Works, works for you. He works. Michael Rear works for me, and uh, John works for Michael Rear. So you could put uh, John. Chain. John is the studio manager here. That's exactly right. So John works for Mike. Right. Mike is over uh, Peg Studio and Metro Three, and then both of those responsibilities uh, uh, he has, and right. he reports to me. Now we had a, a before a few years ago. I don't remember how long ago. Three years ago, maybe. We had a big merger between the stations. We did. Between 9, 10, and 19. That's right. But three was always separate. That's exactly right. right. And you were the guy who, I remember the first day I met you, you came in with this big chart. We're going to have a studio <laughs> manager here, and we're going to have a, um, the other people on this side. You remember well, that? Well, it, it, it worked out good, though. It, it, if you remember back, there had been some irregularities over the past 20 Forever. years. Or so. Well, somebody, 20 years ago, some guy ran away with all the money before, <laughs> before anybody forgot. Uh, you know, there, there were irregularities with money, irregularities with, with vehicles, and so when the Dean administration uh, thought it was time, let's, let's just try something a little different. And well, so who, put the, who put the bug in his ears about this? I mean, somebody must have did something about it. I don't know. I was just asked to go in and talk to people, help work through a solution together. I mean, the right. last thing the mayor wanted to do was come down and say, thou shalt do this. Those types of things don't work real well. So what we did was try to say, okay, what are, what are the needs that we see? How can we kind of get some accountability, but still let you guys do the things you do here and do it well and focus on those things? So, you know, that's that's really but what who, we came to. who hatched to. the plan about the studio manager on one side and the other people on the other side? Was I, that you? We just came up with the thought 
the process. Oh. One of the requirements, if you'll remember, was that um, the money that bought, paid for the studio, that paid for the equipment, comes to Metro from the Comcast local franchise right. agreement. Right. So all this is, strictly speaking, Metro property. So one of the requirements, we wanted to make sure that Metro property, lights, cameras, vehicles, stopped walking out. <laughs> and so right. one of the, the good ways that we saw to do that is that is to, to take some responsibility and step up and actually put uh, a management staff in place. So well, and it we, wasn't free. You know, we're, right. we've got a budget here for our studio staff and their associated benefits and things like that of about $150,000 a year that, that Metro government is kicking in toward running this. So the mayor has been uh, a very um, That's an extra $150,000 that we, don't, we didn't have that before. You, that you didn't have before. Right. And so and then we're, you're still getting the Comcast uh, franchise money. And you got right. it. But I mean, that's oh, I always thought, even when we were just Channel 19, that what we really needed was a studio manager, somebody who would be here. Because I don't think there's been a time for anybody here since the merger that you haven't been able to shoot when you, you know, it's, you didn't come in and say, hey, we can't shoot today because something's broken. That's great. And that was one of our goals, is to simplify it. Um, you know, we wanted to listen. We wanted to listen what the problems were, and that's what we um, kind of tried to work out. And I'm glad you think it's worked out well. well I think it's worked out well. Well, do you know that it, it's not just this, it's not the setup so much, it's the people. You have to have the right people in place. And John, who's maybe in the booth over there, I don't know, he's doing a really good job. John's great. Yeah. John does a great job. John Ferguson it right. does a great job for us. Let's vote for him for something. But well, you think he can run for council? John Ferguson for council? You know what? You have to talk to him about that. I don't know where he lives. I think he lives in my area. I hope he lives in Davidson County. No, I think he lives in Bellevue. Well, that's Davidson County. I Gallagher. think I have his address. Look, should I give his address? Or? Uh, just probably <laughs> not. <laughs> okay, so what else do you do down there besides besides the merger of the state? We, we're talking about um, Channel 3 now. What does Channel 3 do? So Channel 3, um, when you're dealing with these PEG channels, public education, public access, education, and government channels, which are all part of kind of the big FCC agreement around com uh, cable franchises. The cable channel or the cable providers provide these channels to municipalities who want them. And in our case, we got four. So you get 9, 10, 19 that are on, that are managed by NECAT. And, and the requirements is that for public access education, and uh, arts, there can be no oversight on the part of the government, which is why we have a separate organization called NECAT that came from MEAC and the other organization. This freedom of speech issue? Is that freedom of speech about? issue, yeah. and you don't want government involvement in you know, public access and public affairs. So as a standard, those are typically run by some agency other than the government. And so that, that is what NECAT was established for and does, does very well. So they do the programming uh, and everything attendant around that. They manage the, the members like you. On the other hand, government TV kind of necessarily needs to be run by government. It doesn't have to be, but in our case, and in most cases it is. But I, I look at, channel, I went down to Channel 3 when the guy Lee was working mm -hmm. there. And they have, one, they have one machine where they can work everything. You know, one guy can do the whole thing. Well, so we run uh, uh, live every council meeting, every school board meeting, a lot of the, uh, the other meetings like planning commission, uh, board of zoning appeals, historic commission, these meetings that are important to people's livelihood right. in Davidson County. So, so because we do so many of them, they are uh, they're typically four or five of those live meetings that are run a week from, from one of three different locations, there is a, a pretty good deal of automation involved. So if you've ever been to the Davidson County Courthouse and to the right. Metro Council Chambers, there are robot cameras that have all the presets, they're all hung up there. And so the room right. that you're talking about has the bank of rows where if, if uh, Council Lady Megan Barry says something, they can punch her button and automatically the camera zooms into her. And so you're very quickly able to track a very, sometimes very complicated setup that if you had, you know, rows of cameras like these around the room, it would just wouldn't be right. a very good use of space. Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, I like the way it works. We, just, we need one of those. <laughs> so um, we get, how now, getting back to the funding here, let's get back, let's get to um, 
how exactly are we being funded so everybody else knows how we're being funded? So, so uh, everybody, how's everybody being funded? Start with you know the whole organization being funded. Why why does Comcast pay anybody anything? And about AT and T, why do they pay anybody anything? What to just go through the whole? Thing. Happy to. So, um, in order to operate a cable system in a county, and this is nationally. Um, the cable operators strike agreements with the local municipalities. In our case, it's a combined city county government called Metro. And, and this happens all over the country? Comcast, all of, all Comcast the country. is doing these agreements with everybody. All over the country, that, they happen. And the reason they strike them is because the cable operator needs access to the rights of way, whether it's buried, for their cable can be buried, their cable can be strung from power that. lines and those things, and there are costs associated with that to the government. So basically what they are doing with these local franchise agreements and the monies that come through them are providing payment for uh, those the, that, that ability to use those, those rights away. And so the things that we get are peg channels on the systems, we get a franchise fee and it's typically excuse me typically it's five percent that's pretty much the standard and that's what we have on five percent of what what they take in five percent of their gross and that is there is a very specific calculation for any cable franchise about what that means so okay. there is a very specific definition it's actually in the metro law metro called metro ordinance okay. how that is calculated and it's five percent of that those payments come in on about a quarterly basis so we get that 5% and that from Comcast, that amounts to about $8 million a year that goes into Metro's general fund. So Metro has about a one point, I think it's about a $1.75 billion budget, $8 million of which comes from Comcast as, as use in revenue so for what, use of that right So what's the thing on my way. bill though that says we're paying you know, we'll pay for something on my bill, those so couple cents here and there. One of the other things that, that, we're, that, that we are getting um, is we are getting support for the peg channels. And for 18 years now, um, that has been a flat $100,000 from Comcast. That was written into the agreement for 15 years, and we've had... Uh, uh, Plus since the eight billion. Well, so it's been 15 years of $100,000 plus three years of extensions, which uh, because the franchise agreement ran out three years ago, but we've extended it. And so it's $100,000 each additional year. And what Comcast does, uh, which they have every right to do, uh, is they show that $100,000 as a cost to their subscribers by allocating that between their number of subscribers. And so that comes down to a nickel a month so that nickel a month that is the PEG support fee that you see on your Comcast bill is it's directly due to that, is paying for that. Now, do they have to do that? No, but it's useful for their, their marketing purposes. Uh, so that's the Comcast side. The AT&T side is similar, except that AT&T went a different route when they entered with Uverse three or four years ago into the cable right. TV business. They went the route and got a statewide franchise so they didn't have to deal with all these cities and counties and municipalities. They made one master agreement, agreed to the same 5% franchise fee, um, and agreed to basically do a pro rata share of whatever their part of the market was versus what, what the in, any incumbent provider, in our case Comcast, right. kind of a pro rata share and they pay that, and so their, if I remember correctly, I think their payment was about $8,000 toward PEG last year. So I can talk about this for a long time. There are differences of how we can use the two types what, what of money. The bottom line is, when, I think you're squeaking again, but the bottom line is when, um, there's a squeaky chair. Can we need squeaky to, we, shoe, uh, we, we sorry. Need, I don't think it's a shoe, I think it's a chair. I think what we need to do is, um, when, when is AT&T gonna get Channel 19? Well, that, or whatever, that's, so that's, our channel. That is a great question. So for four years or now. Or nine or 10 or whatever. Yeah, so any any of the peg, none right. of our peg channels appear right. on on. Every on time they come Cubers. knocking on my door, I said, you got channel 19 yet? No, I'm, goodbye, I don't want you. And you know, I get asked that question every year by the Metro Council at my budget season. I so see they council have members on, on the street. No, nope, they don't. Okay, none no, of our peg okay. channels. I get asked, when am I gonna get to see myself? People wanna watch this. The reason is about four years ago, 
when AT&T approached us, um, we thought it was a great idea, but there is a very big difference of opinion as to who has to pay for what to get the channels on their system. So you guys are creating the channel and it's being broadcast to Comcast. Comcast paid and has paid all the costs associated with getting the signal from here to their cable system. The state franchise, the way I read it, the way my attorneys and Metro Legal read it, is that AT&T has to provide all costs of getting transmitting those signal to their system. They disagree. So we could pay for them. How much money are we talking about here? Uh, we're not talking about a whole lot of money. But the, but the point is, um, that's taxpayers money when the state law says they're supposed to pay for it. Couldn't they do the same thing that Comcast is doing and charge an extra couple cents a, a Th bill? Hey, that's a question for AT&T. Um, that, would that cover it? Uh, question for AT&T. We, I have as recently as about three months ago had a AT&T big shot in who was a new contact of mine and was going to take a look at it and it got to um, whomever up top, they, they again were unwilling to make a change. What could change things, however, um, there are other cities in Tennessee, which is on the same franchise that we have, that, that went ahead and did it. They went ahead and they paid whatever costs were associated with getting their peg channels on. Knoxville is the case I'm talking about. And here, several years later, they had an expensive piece of equipment. It was some $10,000 encoder or something that failed. The only reason they needed that piece of equipment was to get their signal to AT&T. State law, the way I read it, the way Knoxville's legal department reads it, and the way our legal department reads it is AT&T has to cover those costs. Well, did Knoxville wind up paying for it? Or did at and uh, AT&T won't pay for it. So Knoxville's so, off? Of it? So I, I assume so. But oh. what's interesting about this, AT&T, uh, uh, had a complaint filed against it by the city of Knoxville, and I think Knox County as well, that that against the Tennessee by the excuse me to the Tennessee regulatory author, regulatory authority, the TRA, that basically says we disagree with this ruling. They should be paying for this. Um, we actually wrote a letter in support of Knoxville, as did a lot of other cities, Murfreesboro or uh, Rutherford County, one did, I think Smyrna did, some other cities and counties around the state, because we all are going to have the same problem. If you're going to pay um, to get on it, which is what they're wanting to do, you shouldn't be having to pay for repair of equipment, even though AT&T tells you, hey, we'll warranty this for do 90 days. That, do you think that we're an asset to AT&T or something they just a pain in the butt to them? I, you know, you have to ask AT&T that. They are say, we an asset to Comcast or are we a pain in the butt to Comcast? I, you know, I think you're an asset to Comcast. But I, mean, I think you would be an asset to AT&T, but at the same time, they're not willing to, to pay. The reason the TRA thing is important is because that could help change a precedent and it could help change the way I, the I state law is reviewed. I understand that, reviewed. but from their point of view, do they want these channels for something else? Do, would they like to have channel 9, 10, 19, and 3 for something else? Maybe it's some commercial thing where they can, um, or do they, are they mandated to have to use these channels for this? Well, so, so it's a difference between a bandwidth and channels. They can and will at some point do what they want to with channels 9, 10, and 19 and three. You know, on AT&T, the channels are kind of meaningless because you're on AT&T's UVerse system, there is a separate place you've got to go to in their, you know, it's all digital, in their system to find the PEG channels. They're not in their standard lineup. Comcast, while we are still in those historic channels, you know, frankly, they could and probably will move they them at some point. Anytime. Sure. I mean, you see they, they send me, because we're the cable administrator for the county, they send us basically monthly a listing of all the cable channel changes and moves. They're moving stuff all the time. And so we have attempted to work language into our new contract with Comcast that we're working on to at least give us a decent amount of notice so you know everybody can right. let people know so we're not on channel three anymore we're on channel 587 right. which nobody will ever typically just scan by unless they know that i'm on right that's right so we, we at least <laughs> want to let people know what's coming um if and when that actually happens 
So besides the CAPE uh, overseeing all this stuff, what else does ITS do? We, we, we are the central IT shop for metro government, for general government. Schools handles most of their own stuff. Hospital authority well, give me an does. Example. What do you mean, general government? So we run a, a the main data center for the metro government. So uh, uh, the planning department, the police department, the fire department. The police department. What do you do for the police department? We do lots of things for them. We run the the network that all their traffic rides on. That that and because of that, we are a very secure organization. Security is very important. To I us. know. I and went down there. Had badges and all this well, stuff. Got to do it. So fire department. We uh, you know we we maintain people's. Uh, PCs and, and laptop computers. We run their email system. We run various programs for them. Uh, we run the, uh, the the accounting system for the government. We run the procurement system for the government. We run the Nashville.gov website. And so we're doing... Uh, How uh, many people are working down there? I've got, uh, uh, including the Metro 3 staff and including the guys that run this studio, I've got about 140 people that work work for us doing this job. So about 120 or so work uh, just on IT types. But how, how many down, how many are at different locations or the most of that one building? Uh, most of us are located at the Howard office building. Uh, and then the Metro 3 people are down at the main courthouse and then your uh, Peg so Studio So this is just one here. branch of all the stuff that you're doing? Yeah, this is, this is one piece. This is one piece of what we do. It's an important piece, just like all the others are important as well. Um, but we've got we got our hands in a lot of different pies, which is makes life really interesting. Because you know, technology changes quite a bit. If you hadn't noticed, yeah, it changes. And so things like this week, this new Windows tablet comes out. Next week, and Windows new Eight, you mean? Windows Eight comes out what? this week, and oh, the, the first tablet, Windows right. tablet, the Surface tablet, mine should be here on Friday. Um, you know, people want to use Apple devices as well. That Apple has historically not played well. Um, one of the big projects, a huge project that we've got going on is we are in the process of renovating uh, Nashville.gov, which is the main Nashville government website from in, in its entirety. So we've got about 19,000 pages of content for about 50 different departments and agencies that all of us are looking at that content, going on to a new system, uh, fully mobile device enabled, so you will be able to, on your phone, see exactly the same thing, the content that you have, except it'll be readable. You know how a lot of things on so phones are like miniature text, you, and you have to see like it. You sound like a busy guy here, Keith. Well, there's a lot going on. I, I, have, right, a, I, thought, I have a I lot of people working this, with me. I thought you were just doing this Channel 19 and Channel uh, We got, it, it makes it fun. We got lots of stuff going on. We're just we're, we're nothing compared to all the stuff you got to do. We're just like we're just like <laughs> Jesse. That's not the case at all. That's why I mean, look at this place. This place has come made great strides um, in the three and a half years that, since we've started working on these changes. And so this is important. Again, I was the, I was the guy. I was a pivot guy for you guys. You got it. I was. I was. Oh, the I guy. appreciate I, that. From the old to the new. Uh, I appreciate right? that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> So give me some more stuff that you do down there besides you do the police department, you do the fire department, you do the website, you do the, what, what, I mean, what I mean, about the mayor's office? You so do we do, the, sure, we do the mayor's office, we do the council You must have chamber. a lot of secrets. You must know all the secrets from there. <laughs> I, I <laughs> you don't got know all the emails and clouds and all that uh, stuff. Security is incredibly important to us. So the security of people's email and their files that we store for them, it is a huge, huge, huge thing. And so if I did know anything, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> so, so Mike, Michael Rionet, he just deals these stations, or does he, does he have another job? He, he, his his role is 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 the peg stations as a whole. So, so Metro 3 as well as uh, working with the PEG studio and the staff. And then he's a big liaison between um, NECAT and us, so. Right, okay. So what's, what's the future for, uh, what do you see the future for us? What do you, what do you think? I, you know, I think there is depends a. Depends on us, doesn't well, it? Well, it, it does depend on you. I think there is a, a change that will be coming to your funding source through this well, Comcast the one, of the one of the changes we're worried about is that we can only use our funds for capital improvements. It, it is and, true. And we're using, we don't raise enough money to pay our employees right now, enough money to pay our employees. So uh, how are we going to get around that? So or that, are we going to get around that? that? That's why you've got a board. That's, and we that's gotta what we got to get rid of the squeaky chairs we got. Yeah. That's what NECAT is for, is there to, to surmount those things like a lot of other cities have. Um, there are very robust um, 
peg organization nonprofits in Tennessee. Knoxville has a very robust one. Germantown has a very robust one. So there are models out there that work. Um, but a big change that we work, we have worked for years with Comcast on trying to get an arrangement to get around. So Comcast is not just being obstinate by by saying you can't use these funds for normal the reason, operating what's the purposes. Reason for it, though? There are FCC regulations that prescribe that. The only reason that is happening now, that you're able to do it on this current contract, is because the predecessor, I don't even think it was Viacom. The, actually, the predecessor to Com Comcast, who had what they have now, the agreement they have now, signed a settlement and release of, of problems with the fran franchise previous, which allowed us to use that $100,000 for anything we want. Comcast doesn't feel that they failed in any measure and therefore they're not willing to sign any kind of settlement and release. Therefore, we fall back to what the FCC allows those funds to be, those franchise uh, peg fees to be used for. So that means operating only, which is exactly the what the AT&T peg funds are used for now. That $8,000 right. or so a year can only be used right. We're for, getting a new soundboard. Which, so. which is why we keep those separate. Right. But it is, it is going to be incumbent upon NECAT to really figure out how to make this model of running a channel, a set of channels. Now, now what on the positive side to that, there are going to be, there could be some major dollars coming in that will allow us to do things for all the peg channels like HD, D H, turning right. these cameras into HD and the equipment in HD. Um, Imagine here in other places. Uh, absolutely. I, I, <laughs> Keith, we, we got to wrap this up. We're done. Well, I appreciate we the time. all the time. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming. I didn't realize you'd do all that stuff. Okay. You're well, like an important guy. You're I, like I, a contact now for me. You got it. I, I've always <laughs> been a contact for you, Jesse. <laughs> we got to get going. My name is Jesse Goldberg. We'll be back next week with another edition of the show.